Hello, everybody out there. Welcome back to the Zodcast. As the title says, we are back with you. Hey, Darnell. Hope you're doing well. Uh, that's an honor, Darnell, that you put WrestleMania on hold to uh, be here. So I, I really do appreciate that because I know you're a you're a WrestleMania fan. Hey, Patty. Hey, Red. Just getting back into Zodiac mode, which is important to do at this point because there's a big Zodiac project I need to get finished up that's been going on for what, like a, a year and a half. I don't know. Um, I'll talk more about that later, but it's a big Zodiac process. Hey, Jen. Hey, Brent. The Ben in Yuba County 5 mode, of course, with the Netflix show coming up. Hey, Fire Pixie. No, I mean, Netflix show that's already out, not coming up. I'm already making mistakes. Uh, and a little bit of DB Cooper mode, but get back into Zodiac mode and a few other cases I want to dig into a little bit. There's a couple of missing persons cases I want to cover coming up. One is a guy uh, out of England that a friend of mine uh, covers there. And I want to do a little bit of a deep dive into this disappearance of this particular uh, person in England. Hello. Be interesting to see how many people come on tonight. Yes, just the beginning that we're starting the week. And, of course, tomorrow is the the great eclipse of 2024. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm in Texas where it's supposed to be coming through Texas. I think in Houston area it's going to be like 92% visible. But there's uh, storms predicted here tomorrow. So they don't think it's going to be the best viewing conditions for the eclipse. I have a friend where it's going to be like 100% where he lives in Page, Texas, outside of Austin, where it'll be like 100% there. So they're all geared up with whatever to look at it. But I think there's going to be like quite a bit of rain and clouds and stuff over Texas. So, you know, it, it'll still get dark, but you won't be able to see the eclipse itself, unfortunately, even though it's been years in the making. But all I can remember is that last eclipse because that happened. And that was it. Right after that, what happened is when Harvey hit here in Texas and everything was underwater, which was insane. Hey, Brian. Hey, Mike. Plate C, haven't seen you in a while. Good to have you back, of course. Jen, you didn't tell me what you thought of the, the Yuba County 5 show. I know you got Netflix just for that. But I want to, I'm definitely interested to hear uh, your take on the Netflix Yuba County 5 episode, which was really good. I might be doing a show with Tony right Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm not sure. He hasn't told me yet. You're getting total there? You are? But is it supposed to be rainy too or you won't be able to see it? I know you. You probably already have some specialized viewing device. I still, is there ever been documented cases of people looking at the eclipse and going blind or whatever it's supposed to do? I mean, you think there'd be a lot of people that, to do it. Hey, Randy, total clip just hours away here in your town. Went down the Yuba County 5 rabbit hole. Deeper you go, mystery could have been solved if the trailer had been searched in a timely manner. That's for sure. Matthias was killed and the other, uh, the, yeah, and the, the, the four others victimized by same. I mean, Matthias may have been killed if it's true that he was thrown over the Orville dam. But I think Gary probably made it out and just got further out. But um, Gary was a Gary was a survivor of, of all of them. I mean, Gary was just wired that way, maybe because of his schizophrenia. He could have gotten deeper, just deeper into the woods. Or maybe he made it out. Who knows? Maybe Gary made it out. And by the time he made it out, he was so far off his medication, he wouldn't have remembered who he was. Oh, your your roommate is in Vermont solo camping for the eclipse. So I guess Vermont will probably, hopefully, not be cloud cover like it is here. It was, it it was sad but good. That's the that's the simplest way to put that show. It was sad but good. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack. Tony and I could probably just go down the deep dives in that for, for hours. I mean, there's so much, and we do know more than we did. I mean, there's no doubt. We even know more now than when, uh, since Tony's book's been out for the, it came out, what, three months ago? Uh, oh, you did? You watched it twice? 
It lived up to the, to the hype. Yeah, I did hype it. You know, it was good. It was just that good. They could have done more of what could have happened true. They only had a certain amount of time to uh, get it all in. But I think they should have at least mentioned uh, Joe Jones's, uh, you know, the sighting. I mean, they didn't have to get in, if, you know, if he lied, told the truth or whatever. But at least the, the mystery part of it, of the sighting. But they did. It's hard to believe you talk about the Yuba County Five for even 48 minutes and not mention uh, Joe Jones is kind of crazy to me or the snow cat, by the way, confident that the eclipse will be an excuse for bad behavior by certain segments of our society. That I, I I'm going to have to agree with that. You're going to watch it now. It, it's good. It's really, it's really sad though. I mean, I know these people and I know the story and it's still just, it got to me. Oh, is that what Tony did? Tony did the lore lodge. I didn't know that. I saw the lore lodge kid come on earlier, but they were talking about something else. But yeah, it's a pretty popular show. I'm gonna have to check that. Tony did tell me he had a podcast to do tonight, uh, and I guess it was lore lodge. So if everybody wants to check out, look, Tony just texted me. Oh, yeah, Tony, I can't say what he just texted me. <laughs> but Tony, you're probably not watching this podcast because it's more of a Zodiac show. But, uh, yes, I do see what's unfolding on Facebook right now. It's funny, I just mentioned Tony Wright. He texted me at that very moment. But it was nothing regarding the Lore Lodge. But, but I like the Lore Lodge. I'm going to have to check out that episode. And I don't can't talk yet about what he mentioned. You were 13 in 1970, partial eclipse, 80%, 2017 at 90%. This will be 100% and sunny at the time of totality. So, you know, if there is true that it can blind you, if you look directly at it or whatever, there's going to be a lot of blind people because you know how people are now. They're just dumb. I mean, they're just going to go. Oh. So I just want to see how that plays out. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that are new to the case because it's getting so much publicity now with the netflix show it's it, it it's a it's a it's a little i mean it's great that new people are coming in but i get you know especially in the facebook group we have family members and on this channel because i know the family members and a lot of them watch the lives here but you know especially george sometimes tammy claudia and tom uh you know it's frustrating to them if somebody comes along these dudes just go lost it's just ridiculous. If you any the people like that's the frustration of it. The people that know it like we do, it's it's not just because we're defending the families or the boys. It's just we we know that that's not what happened. It didn't happen. It's not a bunch of dudes that just oh took the wrong turn. Uh, that so it's frustrating. But it's good to have the new people. It's good to have uh, uh, people that have never heard heard of it before being around. Think they could have done better. I thought they did pretty good on the on the human side of it. Well, you know, I think it's I don't think it's officially closed because they put that note in the file about it being foul play in terms of uh, the, the of, I guess you would call it the death of Gary Mathias. They said they believe that that uh, foul play is involved, even though obviously we've never found Gary. Yeah, they're sheeple. They're gonna look right up at it. Hey, Mark. Yeah, kind of getting sick of new people that throw Gary's name around. That's true. That's a hundred percent. They should have checked the cab, and you know, some people come out and argue against it, and and, and that's one thing that I didn't like. And in, in, you know, that they did get wrong in the documentary is they, you know, the one guy, whoever this guy was, somebody, I think Jennifer, did you send it to me? Who he thought it was? Somebody did. Uh, that gentleman, he's the only person I didn't know in the whole thing was this guy that the you know, older gentleman that was wearing a tie and a coat or whatever. He's the only one I didn't know. Uh, parroted that line about the, the uh, trailers being 20 miles away from where the car was abandoned. Wrong. I mean, at best, as the road goes, it was 11.7 miles. As the crow file flies, 5.3 miles. Wasn't 20 miles, dude. If you know the case, you know it wasn't 20 miles. I mean, I'm not downplaying what they would have gone through if they did walk to the trailers. Heck, six miles in that kind of temperature would have been enough to give most people hypothermia. So I'm not downplaying that. But that was either an error in reporting in the early days or 
the the law enforcement wanting you to believe it was 20 miles away to better explain why they didn't check the trailers. Well, it was 20 miles away. Of course we didn't check. But as someone mentioned recently in the group, uh, the reason were they didn't think these 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 uh, mentally challenged guys could have made it that far, even as far as 11 miles to the trailers. You know, they just thought no way. But it wasn't that far as the crow flies. And if you're searching by helicopter, it's not like there's so many uh, houses or cabins up there where it's like there's no way we could. You know, they they knew they were there. They knew they were there. It's good. Let me see. No, I think they tried to find fingerprints in the car and they, they, they didn't find anything or, or at least of, of anything they didn't expect. It's called um, Files of the Unexplained, Brian. So when you search um, Netflix, just type in Files of the Unexplained and, it's, and then it's episode three. It's three different episodes. I think one of them is about UFOs. The other is about feet washing ashore somewhere. And the third one is uh, Yuba County 5. So the first two have nothing to do with it. It's the uh, third one in Files of the Unexplained. I don't know. I, they, it's a good question. They should have. It's an absolute tragedy that they didn't. It was you. Yeah, you couldn't find them on the Yuba County, Yuba City website. All you found was from years ago. I think you're right who you thought it was. No, I didn't. I didn't watch the other two uh, two other two episodes, but I want to, especially if that feet deal is interesting. Uh, I don't I don't know what the the UFO one was about. The feet washing ashore happened in Washington. You live close to where the feet were being discovered. Really, I didn't know that. You're in Arizona, aren't you, Brian? That's interesting. About now, I want to go watch the feet one. Definitely want to watch the feet, but yeah, definitely in uh, going to be hard getting out of Yuba mode because of all the uh, fanfare coming. You're right, Pedro. The Yuba County crew were not. Let's, let's see a post certified cops at that time. No or limited training. No, that's interesting, Pedro. I didn't know that. I did not know that. So the Yuba County Sheriff's Department was was not where they weren't certified cops. I'll have to ask Tony about that. I've never heard that, Pedro. I did. I've heard about the feet that washed up in uh, Vancouver. You are in Arizona. You moved there from up from Port Angeles, Washington. Okay, what's that close to? Is it close to see closer to Seattle or? Uh, Further south. I don't think so. I don't think I've heard of Peter Bergman. I have to look it up. I've heard the name. You're joking, right, Stuart? The, the feed episode is called Footloose. <laughs> oh, man. That is funny. But you're not sure if it starts Kevin Bacon or not. Yeah, you know, a friend of mine uh, suggested that to me that maybe the uh, that the red truck that everybody's so obsessed with uh, could have been a red snowcat, and you know, actually found a picture of a vintage snowcat that was red. Uh, that would be really interesting in that that point because that would kind of fill in my uh, not so popular theory that the boys were taken from Rogers all the way to the trailers in uh, the Granite Basin Fire Camp. Because a snowcat would have been the easiest way to traverse the snow. You're not, oh, good. This is a good time to get into that. This is a good uh, place to segue, even though the Yuba stuff is so popular. But like I said, uh, hopefully Tony will come on soon, especially he's been busy. He did Lore Lodge and some other shows he hasn't done before, which are great because it's even getting more coverage to the case. I think the Zodiac was Donald Lee Cheney. Always have, always will. That, of course, was Arthur Lee Allen's. Uh, buddy back in the uh, late 60s and Arthur Lee Allen is still the prime suspect in the Zodiac Killer Crimes. If you've seen the movie Zodiac by David Fincher, it uh, mainly focuses on Arthur Lee Allen is the person of interest in the movie. And that movie was based on Robert Graysmith's book called Zodiac. 
and that's where the movie comes from. And it famously starts uh, with Donald Lee Cheney, Arthur Leon's friend, bringing him forward as a suspect in the crimes of July of 1971. See, this is good for me to get back in the swing of it. Uh, and uh, Don Cheney says that my buddy told me on New Year's Day, 1968, that he was going to call himself Zodiac and he was going to go kill couples on lover's lanes. And uh, if you believe that, then Arthur Leon has to be the Zodiac. Famously, as I pointed out, at some point, Donald Lee Cheney changes his story uh, to where all this stuff transpired on New Year's Day, 1969, which is uh, his Achilles heel, because that's really uh, there was the main reason he switches his timeline is because someone was smart enough, uh, which the car cops did not do this, but years later found out that Arthur Lee Allen had not been fired from Valley Springs Elementary School until uh, March of 1968, which was a problem for Don Cheney because he said that when he went over to Allen's house on New Year's Day of 68, that he was consoling Allen over losing that job. Well, he hadn't lost the job yet. Big problem. So Don has to move that timeline now an entire year. Uh, which is problematic. And uh, my whole theory is to expose that uh, big misstep by Don Cheney and everything else that he said that was wrong. So that, who's, that is who I believe it was the creator of the Zodiac persona was Donald Lee Cheney. I think that uh, Arthur Lee Allen was for the most part a patsy and uh, he was being manipulated by Donald Lee Cheney. So that's the uh, nucleus of, of that. You think Zodiac got us resigned from the Air Force? Yeah, you did. You did send me that Air Force stuff. Uh, and I sent you Don Cheney's DDR 214 from the Air Force. Zodiac was a program which was used to decipher markings on UFOs. Yes, Cheney was in the Air Force. There's no doubt about it. Missing Enigma. Yeah, he, he did a good job because, you know, he used the police files. So um, Nick Kyle did a good job. He claims the town bully could possibly have the initials of GW and was married to Gary's sister, Sharon. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. But no mentioning of who the town bully is on this channel. Darnell, there was no Zodiac. Arthur Lee Allen, Donald Lee Cheney acted in tandem as a single entity to scare people. Just your opinion. Could have been, Darnell. Um, you know, the Zodiac was a boogeyman. It was made up. It wasn't It's uh, in, in the vein of a comic book character, which we know the Zodiac, uh, like to uh we well we, what we believe he was inspired by tim holt uh red rider various other comic books that uh Sefer has brought up a lot did ala get a doc a documented speeding ticket driving back from barry s the evening of the murder i've never heard that that would be huge if that was true i've never heard that did the ticket state what make model and year vehicle he was driving I no, I don't think that that didn't happen, Cat Daddy. If that did, everybody would know about it. That'd be huge news. Uh, you might be talking about the speeding ticket that Arthur Lee Allen got in the city of San Francisco uh, the day on when one of the Zodiac letters was mailed, and it's called the Pleasanton letter. And that was the first time that uh, a letter, a Zodiac letter, was not mailed from the city of San Francisco is on the day that Arthur Lee Allen did get a speeding ticket in the city of San Francisco. Uh, and, and that's a good question. And with that ticket, I don't know if it had the maker model on his car. I've never actually seen the ticket, but it is proven that he did get a ticket. So the theory of course, is that Alan now can be placed in the city of San Francisco. So he's smart enough not to mail the letter that day from the city. So he goes further out to Pleasanton, which I don't know. What is that? 45 minutes or so South of California past Oakland or something uh, from the from San Francisco. And uh, I think that's highly possible. I think Cheney could have sent the letters. I think they both worked on the letters to the Zodiac Killer where the AI picked up on uh, two letter writers for a while. Then it goes to a single writer of uh, the letters. I think that's uh, Cheney and Allen. I'll always believe it. Pedro, Don is the Z. Did Toski write that pro Toski letter? I think he did. I really do. I it's just the fact that it mentions Toski. Come on. They bounced him around. They they bounced him from the case soon thereafter. So you're using Don's word there, Pedro. D bounce. He went to the pawn shop detail where they sent the old drunk cops back in the day. Yep, you are law enforcement in San Francisco, so you know uh that is exactly how it went down. But yeah, I think Toski wrote that letter. I really do. That's the I'm back with you. 
Um, when it says that city pig Toski, you know, the, the letter starts right out mentioning Toski. So it makes you really, I'm going to be stunned if he didn't write it. I really would. I, I, and it's definitely not confirmed Zodiac. No question the DLC in LA are involved. I also suspect that it was another party. Just not sure who. Yeah, of course, people kick around Panzarella. Um, they kick around. I've heard another name I won't mention. <laughs> they kick. Uh, you know, I've kicked around um, Fred Manali. Somebody wants me to cover Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Slink some more. What I don't understand in the Santa Rosa stuff though is these are girls that were mur murdered, raped, very, uh, very sadistic. Uh, that doesn't sound like Arthur Lee Allen at all. You know, I don't know why Grace Smith tried to tie him into that. Uh, but Manali's certainly somebody to check out. But I, you think they would have some DNA from one of those uh, potential. I mean, it's kind of like non-canonical Zodiac crimes with the Santa Rosa stuff. You don't know who exactly is a victim. You know, it's pretty safe that maybe Kim Allen was a victim of the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Slayer. And... Um, of course, she's connected to Fred Manali because she was one of his students and he had a, a picture he, he drew of her in his van when he got killed in that really weird uh, head on collision that killed Fred Manali. But, man, that's so deep down. You know, I don't know. I mean, I, I struggle with him because he was just so successful. He he was during the time of the crime. Sandra Rowe is his. his uh, his business was taking off like a rocket. You know, that didn't make it impossible that he would have been in the ball at the same time. But I would have thought that would have taken so much of his time and effort and brain power to get that company off the ground, which it did. And it was hugely successful. But Science Dynamics was in its infancy during, you know, when the when the Zodiac crimes were taken off. Of course, Don worked there in uh, 71, hiring, firing. Uh, general manager of science dynamics. But of course, the big question is there, why would you leave a cushy job like that? Working for your friend who's got a company that's taking off like, like crazy doing computerized medical building, no future in that whatsoever, right? Uh, and he leaves. Comfortable job with your friend, making good money. You're, you know, probably low stress. I mean, I can't see Panzarella just cracking the whip on his old college pal and you leave that job. Why? What did, what did you get that was better? I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, I just said it, Brian. It's called Files of the Unexplained. There it is. Files of the, uh, Files of the Unexplained, episode three. Shirt combined with him also. Oh, are you talking about the shirt he wears and his name is Arthur Lee Allen? Uh, combined with the Manhattan PD with uh, DLC really makes makes you wonder. Yeah, well, you know, they call they call Manhattan Manhattan Beach Police Department to get the ball rolling, and then they contact Armstrong up in um up in San Francisco. So the Manhattan Beach guy that Panzarello's buddy was with, and I'm sure he told everybody the Manhattan Beach PD, hey, these dudes think they know who the Zodiac killer is. I mean, you think that didn't get out? Like those guys didn't the word didn't spread. Even in Southern California that, hey, we know these dudes down here at this company called Science Dynamics that know who the Zodiac was. Come on. We're all nuts. Yeah, why would he leave? Yeah, he is a nut. Why would he leave? I, it makes no sense. He job top a lot, which I guess that shouldn't be a crime in my case. But uh, yeah, why would you leave? That would have to be the cushiest job ever. Working for Science Dynamics. Hiring, firing, nothing, nothing too stressful. Your buddy is the boss. He's the owner, the only person that can fire you. This makes no sense. Makes no sense at all. But so staying in the mode of Zodiac, I always go back to the well, which is newer comments under his name was Arthur Lee Allen, which is on there twice. One is, where's Corky? One is hosted by, you know who that is. Another one is Pedro Bosox. And I check both of them because you can go find the newer comments. And this, interesting enough, going back to Santa Rosa, this person wrote, this was this was a recent comment. It was only three days, old, three days old on YouTube. What I find interesting is that during the time Arthur Leon lived in Santa Rosa, the infamous Santa Rosa hitchhiker murders occurred. 
it seems that the it seems that the victimology and the mo in those crimes would align more with what Sharon Hagen was suggesting. Of course, that's a profiler from his name is Arthur Allen, someone who displays sadistic tendencies. Uh, agreed. Santa Rosa, the person that killed those girls in Santa Rosa, was very sadistic. This wasn't Zodiac. Uh, who did not rape anybody. He didn't sit there and glorify it at all. I mean, he did wear the outfit at, at uh, Berryessa, but there, there wasn't this huge sadistic side to it. There just wasn't. Here's another one by Happy Wanderer four weeks ago. It says, and it says at 901, that's uh, the nine minute mark of his name was Arthur Lee Allen. Cheney talks about Allen relaying to him his plans to all the things the Zodiac ultimately did and tells Cheney that he will call himself the Zodiac. And Cheney's response to that is, well, you can have a better name than that. And this guy says, what an odd response. In my opinion, if Alan is the Zodiac, Cheney was his accomplice. That's why the description of the killer at Lake Berryessa, a heavyset male, and the description of the suspect leaving the area after the Paul Stein murder, a much thinner male, are so different. That's why the DNA on the stamp and the handwritten wasn't from Alan. The Zodiac is Alan and Cheney. Interesting comment. I like reading these because some people are brand new to it and they're just giving their honest thoughts of that video. That That's what brought me into this was that video specifically. I, I had watched his name was Arthur Lee Allen before I even saw the movie Zodiac. This guy says, um, his name's Peter. All I can say is after watching this, Donald Lee Cheney is the Zodiac killer. What? Does suspicious character so all this time right under their noses? Mr. Potato Head is the Zodiac killer or was the Zodiac killer. And then he says, look at the way Donald Lee Cheney talks about Arthur Lee Allen was obviously a patsy. Then he says, I think Don Cheney had everything to do with being the Zodiac. Agreed with you, Peter. Uh, another guy, Snake, says Don Cheney. Sure, certainly knew that Arthur Lee Allen was the Zodiac, but said nothing for 40 years up until Allen died. And then all of a sudden is implying that he knew all along. Come on, man, that dude is involved. Why would he even bring up the saliva on the stamps unless he had something to do with it and wanted to throw off the scent? See, I love going back to the well. It just it makes, it makes it so easy. This person said, you know, of course, going back to the watch and the whole story about how uh, Arthur Lee Allen's mom was giving him the Zodiac watch for Christmas and that it, it, Allen was worried he got stiff. That's why he's showing the, the watch to Don Chaney because he thought it was a cheap watch, which Zodiac watches are not cheap. They're expensive. They're very good watches. Uh, this guy said if his mother stiffed him and gave him a SHIT watch, she would have been the next victim. <laughs> um, this person says, okay, he's quoting, he said, Arthur Lee Allen told me it was him. Every person in the interview it was John Cheney, brain dead YouTubers. <laughs> I love that one. Another one. In summary, either Don Cheney is lying or he is telling the truth about Arthur. Secondly, anyone who would propose Mr. Cheney is telling the truth, but someone else who coincidentally performed the murders exactly as he said he would, where he would, using the same name and rhetoric and writing letters to the rational. Very good. So there's just, there's never any shortage of comments like that. You know, he does. The first person that, that showed me that was, um, God, was Professor Stewart. Professor Stewart was the first person that took the, uh, the picture of uh, Cheney with and put it up against the, the lurker who, you know, the voyeur we call it and uh, had that just that basic stick, kind of like a stick figure, look and it, it and i put that picture up and i'll do it i'll put it back up in the community again which i've done before but uh he does he does look like the lurker they froze it's the botox the front of the building numbers were were redrawn on the envelopes are the same as what zodiac did do that's true good point Stewart, just said, I just said the word Stewart, and then I see your comment. Oh, that was Professor Stewart. Uh, DLC and ALA working as a team could have been the reason the Zodiac case remains unsolved. It was a great cover story, as neither was 100% responsible for anything, and that could get them off if arrested. True. Uh, you know, I think that's what happened in the John Bonet Ramsey case. 
and when they had the grand jury get together, they probably couldn't really figure out if it was uh, if it was uh, Patsy or her husband. Uh, I, it it took a long time to crack it because it, the way he did it, the way he hid the. Uh, the way he did a certain part of it was was he arranged it differently and moved things around. He made it a lot harder because the first one was so easy to solve. I don't think he thought it would take 52 years to solve it, though. And there's still a lot of debate about, you know, how good he would have been at math or whatever to construct the uh, 340 cipher. A lot of people said, well, it still wasn't that hard to do it, but he just made it more difficult to break. No, that was another guy. Yeah, there's a whole yeah, a whole line was missing when it was when it was transposed, leading to a delay in cracking the cipher. That's that's true. It took a long time. It took really three smart guys to do it, and a computer program and a and a math wizard. So I think he I think he was smart enough to create something that was that hard to. Uh, to break you can't figure two you can't figure two zodiac attack oh oh you can't figure two zodiacs okay yeah i think i agree with darnell zodiac was mainly a a, a, a character that was created they've never described it but uh I haven't ever heard anyone that would describe it as narcissistic, but he was odd. I mean, he, he does a good job of proving that himself. I mean, he's a watch. His name was Arthur Lee Allen and tell me that's not odd. He's odd as you can be. And then when you read more like shooting Zodiac by Gray Smith, I can't get over the part where uh, they're going to do the movie and they're going to do the uh, documentary, I guess. So, um, Cheney's going to get reunited with Sandy Panzarella and they walk into the room. He knows he's going to see Panzarella and he walks in and Panzarella's in the room and Cheney doesn't recognize him at all. And Panzarella, who has already got early Parkinson's kicking in, uh, immediately no recognizes Don. But Don says he doesn't recognize Panzarella. That you know that's not true. I mean, for whatever reason, Don wanted them to believe he didn't recognize Panzarella. Whatever in his weird mind thought this was some kind of a tactic or something weird. I mean, Don doesn't look that different from whenever the last time they saw each other. We don't know when that was though. Uh, I don't, I highly doubt it was when Don stopped working for him in 71 or early 72, whenever that was when Don stopped working for Sandy, but you, you know, Sandy recognized Don immediately and Don does not recognize Sandy, even though he knows he's going to meet him and for the first time in many years. And he's like, kind of like, who are you? I, I don't know. That's just really strange that he made that call because I do not believe that Don didn't immediately know he was looking at his old friend. Crack during COVID when nobody had anything better to do. Yeah, good good point. Three, Yep, three different people from three different continents, U.S., Belgium, and Australia. Yeah, but definitely, two people could definitely make it a lot harder, but, and somebody is supposed to give me a new theory about Arthur Lee Allen that they heard of. And I was hoping to know it by this show, but I haven't spoken to the person that's going to tell me, and I don't know, it could be, I don't know if it's going to be confidential or not, but somebody's supposed to uh, tell me a new theory that was told to them that, that they think is highly intriguing that involves Arthur Lee Allen. And they want to tell me about it because I would be able to have good insight on it because I know a lot about Arthur Lee Allen. So, Hopefully, I'll know that next week, and I can share it with you guys if I'm allowed to share this uh, theory I'm supposed to hear about. Yeah, I, I agree. The fact that, D, that that Cheney pretended not to recognize Panzarella tells you that, oh, wow, that's interesting that Panzarella was involved in looking to distance a relationship. That's a good way of looking at it. I'm sure Jerome wouldn't disagree with you. Could have been. Of these two are the Zodiac. How does Paul Stein's shirt get into one of the letters? Um Oh, the, the Stein shirt was in three of the letters, uh, and we don't know. So 
he definitely wanted to make sure that that he proved that he was the killer of Paul Stein. The the piece of shirt came in three different letters. I don't know if they ever matched the three pieces to the shirt to make sure that there wasn't another piece still missing because he cut a he tore a good section of the back of Stein's shirt. And I never heard if they took the three pieces that were mailed in. One was with the bell eye letter and put all three swatches, if you will, and match them up to the shirt to see if there was still any missing. I don't know if they've ever done that. If Richard's watching and if he knows the answer to that, uh, if anybody would know the answer to that, it'd be Richard. So let me know, Richard. He'll probably email me tomorrow, <laughs> which is great. Uh, I love it when Richard listens because nobody singly knows more about the case than Richard Grinnell and uh, his great website, ZodiacCyphers.com. But I don't know if anyone they've ever done that. You think they would? We've got three pieces of the bloody shirt from Stein. Let's at least see if they match. You know, they, they know they matched up, but and I know they got they were bloody and dried or whatever. I get that. But you know, would have been able to piece that with the missing section of shirt and at least said, okay, the guy still got a four by five inch is still missing. You know, so that's still out there. If we ever find someone with that final fourth piece, if you will, then we've got our we've got our man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely like somebody that would not let the other people take credit for his work. And um that's what I've always said. If the real Zodiac saw or knew Arthur Lee Allen was getting all this attention. And I don't think that was a big, the, the, the main thing I want to know is how guarded of a secret was it that they were looking at Arthur Lee Allen in 1972? I, how guarded could that have been? Because Manhattan Beach already knows about it. They're down in Southern California and the whole department probably knows because they're not going to be quiet about that. I mean, obviously they got to work it or whatever, but I just don't think they're going to keep a good lid on that. And then they go up to San Francisco and they hear about Allen and then they hear about it in Napa, and then they hear about it in Vallejo. How guarded of a secret was it? And it, the Zodiac, he would have known they were looking at Allen and knew they were giving his credit to Arthur Lee Allen for creating what he did. I think he would have said something in a letter like, I am not the bald guy from 32 Fresno Street or something like that. Like he denied not being the caller to the Jim, bon, uh, Jim Dunbar show in the – uh, 340 cipher. We know he said, I am not the guy that called into the TV show. I think he would have done the same with Alan. If he didn't want you to think it was Alan, just saw a photo of ALA with a widow's peak wearing glasses. It was a dead ringer for the residual Z sketch, except Alan's photo shows around her heavier head. Well, that's what Falk said. And Falk really overdid it by saying, uh, that the man he saw in the Presidio that night was what, 80 pounds lighter than Allen or something like that? Of course, Cheney's not 80 pounds lighter than Allen. He's probably 25 pounds lighter than Allen. But uh, he was sure that Allen was way too heavy to have been the guy he saw that night. Never heard of that. <laughs> Orange Julius. You know, somebody used to say it was pronounced be uh, belly, but I've heard, I actually heard a video of Melvin Belli pronounce it Belli. So uh, somebody made made a good case that it was actually pronounced belly, like, like your belly. You don't think Cheney was just trying to get his 15 minutes of fame because, because he knew the prime suspect? No, I don't. <laughs> because Cheney... Um, Cheney just li Cheney lines up better in so many ways. And, you know, what if he did? Let's just say he did know the prime suspect that it's true that Alan told him all that. I guess he's just as bad because he didn't immediately come and tell the police or even uh, his former best friend, Ron Allen, that your brother told me he was going to go killing people on lovers lanes. Don's going to keep this all to himself until July of 1971, where if it was Alan, Alan could have killed another who knows how many people before Don decides to, oh, well, I'm going to go get with Sandy and we're going to get something rolling on this. I mean, it's, it's insane. You really do. I mean, and then you take the crazy circumstantial uh, side of the fact that Don Cheney goes to the same tiny junior college with Paul Avery in 1952. Uh, and that Cheney's richest relative has a last name paradise. 
with the D-I-C-E spelling, and that Cheney's uh, an avid game hunter and adept with carbon steel bladed knives and, and makes leather sheaths for them. Remember uh, Brian Hartnell talking about the cross circle logo on the hood from Lake Berryessa that it wasn't just scrawled on with paint. It was done with care as if it was sewn. Uh, Cheney has far more of the attributes to have been the sole creator of the Zodiac persona over Alan any day of the week. I think Alan's a blowhard. I, I really do. I think Alan's a blowhard and he uh, got manipulated by a master. Thank you. Appreciate it, Spivey, man. Good seeing you again. Probably killed someone in Southern Cal, Orange County, and there was a witness, so he had to leave his cushy job. I mean, could have been. I mean, who knows if he kept killing or not. I kind of leaned towards he just stopped because he almost got caught at, at the Presidio that night. But um, yeah, Bella is definitely correct. But some people think it's Belly. Kind of like uh, Ned used to say that uh, Squiggy Fromm's name was Squiggy Frome. <laughs> And I don't know if that's true. Ned, correct me if it's not. Is it Squiggy From or is it Squiggy From A? Of course, one of the Manson girls. Yeah, it's hard to go by the, you know, the sketches are not a photograph. Same with the D.B. Cooper case. It's a, you don't, you know, it's just a sketch. It's not a photo, but people want to take it all the way to the bank. Sketches are just that. They're not actual photographs. Yeah, Belli. Not Bell E, Belli. Belli. Frome. <laughs> Is it Frome, Keith? Frome? Like F R O M A Y? Or from? Like, or like, like from F R O M M? From? Or. Or from a squiggy was <laughs> in Laverne Shirley. That's true. So is it Keith? Is it from from a? You put from my? Is it like? Well, I mean, like I know, like does it pronounce like from may? Not from like f r o m m or from me? Is it from me? Is that how you pronounce it? Squiggy from me? So maybe we're both, Ned and I are both wrong. Not from, it's from me. Shit, I'm going to get hung up on this now. I'm going to go to bed thinking about how she pronounces her name. Is she still alive? So you're saying it is. It's from me. Wow, we were both wrong. Keith corrects it. Crazy. I always thought it was just from, but I was not big into, you know, the digging into Manson stuff. Keith, you might know it because you're a, you're a tried and true Beach Boys fan. So am I. Yes, ALA is definitely an attention seeking blowhard. You did everything possible to come a suspect and most likely wrote the letters to Tonto police. Apeto is probably not fond of the police. No, he was not fond of the police at all. Um, what did he say? That famous line is uh, he, police are like fishermen. They're both liars or whatever that line was that Alan had. Af and, you know, Alan did have a disdain for the police, but I think Cheney did too. When you listen to his name with Arthur Allen, when he's talking about going to the Pomona police, he's like, oh, he was an ideal cop and his name was uh, bullet slate stone or granite or something of that on that order. Cheney loves saying that phrase on that order. That would have been great if that made it to a Zodiac letter on that order. Cause Game, set, match. Any previous killings vary on near where Allen or Cheney grew up? I, I, probably, but there's so many that were going on in California for you know, all those decades. It would be just impossible to know who did what. I mean, you got Santa Rosa. You got the Manson stuff. I mean, even in the earlier years, I think there was quite a bit. Um, you, you know, Ray Davis, the Ray Davis murder is really interesting to me. I, I'm thinking that's now even more plausible than Gaviota Beach with the murders of, uh, of Dominguez and Edwards, the couple that was killed 
on the uh, on the beach in 63. Of course, Ray Davis was 62, but that just has hardcore shades of Zodiac in it. And uh, Davis was living in Pomona with his wife, and then they split up, and he winds up moving down to Oceanside with his brother, which is, you know, I think he had just been down there two or three months driving a cab, and then he's uh, murdered by somebody. And then, of course, there was a phone call after the Ray Davis murder. So uh, that one just screamed Zodiac. In her, in her interview, she says it's from me, or from me. <laughs> and she's still alive, living in New York. So she got out? Or she she's out of prison? Didn't uh, uh, Patricia Krenwinkel finally get out? Showed him a picture of Ruby 10 minutes after JFK on the grassy knoll, and he said, a client lied to me. I've never heard of that. Trona, California. Some of the last um, family defenders were still living their desert dream. It's a weird place. Confusing thing is, is how you see the video of Lynette and the other ladies, how good they are with guns. That's true. They're all shooting out at the Spawn Ranch. But when she went to shoot Gerald Ford, it was ridiculous. Yeah, it's probably some kind of a... Uh, Probably some kind of a... You did grow up in Pomona? Really? Wow. What what years was it? You weren't, you weren't there in 63, were you? 63 would have been the year down there where the, where the boys were hanging out down there in uh, Cal Poly. Yeah, Leslie Van Houten is finally... Yeah, that's fairly recent, right, Keith? Maybe a year? Yeah, she said the same thing. Van Houten, Van Houten got out. Krenwinkel is still in. Okay, Van, Van Houten got uh, Van Houten got out, and Krenwinkel is still in. Somebody asked me the other day if Manson was still alive. I said no, Manson died uh, years ago, and then there was a a fight for his ashes between the grandson, the one that lives in uh, Florida, and another guy who claimed he was Manson's son. And I guess the guy, the son couldn't prove it with the DNA. So it went to the grandson and they had that cheesy TV show where they had the funeral for Manson, where they scattered the ashes along some Creek or somewhere or really weird. Krenwinkel is in Leslie Van Houten, just out squeaky from a <laughs> is out for years now. This is a YouTube video showing her going after someone recording her. Oh, wow. Golly. I, I would never do that. I don't care. You know, I know they're the Manson people, but I mean, she's out. I would never do that. Like rounding somebody, you know, ambushing them at the Walmart. That's pretty, pretty crazy. Pomona high school, baby, 73 to 89. While the night stalker worked in a, at the adjacent diamond bar. Yeah. I forgot the night stalker had some, uh, Ties over there, Richard Ramirez. He looks a lot alike my my friend's cousin. The Babushka lady has always been in, interesting in the JFK case. The only person in many of the on-site crucial photos who still has never been interviewed or known. Yeah, I would definitely definitely want to know more about that. I will say, if I've, I've said it before, I work for my uncle, who's uh, really. Uh, Rich and powerful guy, and he's good friends with um, uh, Conley, uh, John Conley the third, whose father was riding in the car at the time. And uh, John Conley has always told my uncle, his good friend, that uh, his father had always told him there were two shots, two shots, and he and he was always told that when he grew up from his father, who was in the car, said there was two shots. So you can forget lone bullet theory. When the son of the man that was riding in the car with JFK uh, tells you that, you can take it to the bank. There were two shots. No doubt about it. This is uh, somebody from the grassy knoll, and maybe uh, Oswald gets one off, but the main shot was coming from the knoll, and that was probably the second shot. Yeah, I knew Watson was still alive. Watson's from uh, the Dallas area, I believe. Grew up in around Dallas. She's alive and well in Dallas. I 
I've never done much on Manson. He gives me the creeps. I don't. Yeah, you told me that before, Pedro, about you and 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 uh, and Belli. You thought you knew Toski too, didn't you, Pedro? Or did you know some? I can't remember. Did you know somebody that knew Toski, or you knew Toski? And is that girl? Is her name Holly Toski or something? That's in some of these Zodiac. Uh, forums now is she related to Dave Toski? I never even asked anyone. I know Ross would know. I think Ross knows her. Is she Ross? Is that is that Toski person in all the groups now? Is she related to uh to Dave Toski? I want to know. She's still a crazy true believer. Man, they were really brainwashed. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Bell is gonna represent Oswald. I didn't, I mean, that, I, I did not know it. Always Strange Manson had the ends of meeting the Beatles and the Beach Boys, just part of the strange magical unknowns of the 60s. True. I heard uh, Mike Love recently tell another Manson story that I hadn't heard before about being there with, uh, I wasn't, I think Dennis was already there, but it was Mike and somebody else. I don't know if it was Bruce or somebody was with Mike at the, at the, uh, Spawn Ranch with Manson. Manson was just MK Ultra. He didn't even do any of the killings. He's just a psycho. Yeah, he sent everybody else out to do the dirty work. It was from the sewer. Fatal shot. Beverly Oliver says she is the Babuska lady. She worked in a club next door to Jack Ruby's club. Grassy Knoll so much smaller in person. I haven't been there in a long time, even though I'm in Houston. But last time I was in Dallas, I didn't get a chance to go by there. I'm going to have to go check it out. Terry Melcher? Yeah, I've heard that name before. That was Doris Day's son? Man, you learn more every day. Did Mike do a lot of acid? Did he really? I talked to Mike Love uh, four months ago. In person. And he maybe he did. Mike's always got all those rings on his right hand. I mean, uh, he's always been nice to me. But I did talk to Mike Love just a short time ago. Terry Melcher was a music producer. Oh, he did? Uh, Keith knows his music. And a darn good musician at that. <laughs> Imagine tripping balls and walking to a Manson Gathering horror show. That would not be good. Lived at 10,050 Celio Drive before Tate. Anytime, Keith. You're, you're good. You know your stuff. Great tone, too. And I love that. I love that guitar. Guitar is fantastic. I always wish I could play like that, but I just wasn't dedicated enough. Oh, yeah. Good point, Jen. You're up in Dallas. People will be watching the eclipse on the grassy knoll. That's like crazy to think about. So, yeah, I think I will hopefully do something with Tony. He texted me a little while ago, and we'll do some more Yuba deep dive. And then hopefully I'll also know that new theory on Arthur Lee Allen. Shots from the knoll. Yes, yeah, still the fatal shot from the sewer under Dealey Plaza. Out down there in 35, 45 minutes was on a riverbank. Tore down the house and changed the address. Neil Young, I never heard Neil Young went out there. Neil Young went out to Spawn Ranch, gave Charlie a purple, purple motorcycle too. I never know. I've never heard that about Neil Young. You always just think of uh, Dennis Wilson mainly. But even Dennis got rid of, <laughs> got to get rid of Charlie at some point. Terry Melcher said Manson music was not marketable. Understatement of the century. Yeah, I think I've heard some of it before. Isn't there one of them out there? He's terrible. I mean, he was just worse than bad. His music is just awful. Went from the street to the river, from Elm, uh, Elm Street to the river and back. That's cool. I got to get up there again. Revolution Blues, it's all about Charlie. Oh, it is. It's it's Toski's granddaughter, and she comes 
on some of the live streams. Does, does she have any beliefs about Allen or anything? Because Toski was a big Allen guy, right? I've seen her commenting, but I, I don't I don't know. You know, I haven't read enough of her comments to know what her uh, – she seems like pretty into it too. Like she's kind of digging around pretty hard. So I'm wondering if she's, a, a, you know, an Allen person or just kind of a general – or does she have a suspect? Young Helen out in uh, Topanga Canyon, not far from. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Slate was the one that took the phone call for, after Barry Essa. The Dave Slate, right? See, I got to get back into this. That's why we're doing this now. I got to get back into zone mode. It was uh, Slate's the one that took the phone call in Napa. When he when Zodiac called after uh, the Lake Berryessa attack, and Slower's the one that took the phone call uh, for Vallejo after Blue Rock Springs. So it was it was Dave Slate. And oddly enough, when you go back to uh, Cheney and his name was Arthur Lee Allen when he's talking about the Pomona cop, his name's a Granite Stone Slate. I th I think he says Slate, which is funny because there is a Slate in the case like you're talking about. Uh, but Darlene Farron. Uh, one of the names in Darlene Farron's address book is a guy whose last name is Granite. And he was a lawyer in San Francisco. And I don't know if they were, you know, what the level of relationship was. And, you know, as many people's they claim that Darlene knew and dated or whatever, her, her, Almost lost my feed. Jack White, the photo expert of JFK, gave you a map of the sewers under Dealey Plaza. That's pretty cool. Hey, Sefer. If you if you missed the the uh, YouTube notification, it's probably because you use a phone. Uh, there's something in the phone settings that keeps you from getting the YouTube notifications, and I need to figure out what that is. Uh, Sefer is like the is the my longest supporter. <laughs> ever since going forward with any public work on any case would be was Zodiac and, and uh, the first person that said, man, Cheney, I was just always wondering about Cheney was Sefer years ago. That's a good question. Did Granite and Belli work at a firm together? That would be a really interesting piece of circumstantial evidence of true. Uh, I don't know, but go back that, that, that little, her little address book is, is, online it's probably at uh, you know whose website and uh his first name's in there i don't recall his first name but if he worked with belli that's interesting but yeah granite in darlene farron's book is an attorney or was an attorney um i'm sure he maybe he's probably not around anymore who knows but that, that would be interesting why do the lights keep flashing <laughs> the eclipse the eclipse is coming down man it's gonna be weird poor brian wilson took too many acid trips without Filing a flight plan never came back completely. No, no, Brian never came back uh, completely at all. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, his wife passed away like four or five months ago. Uh, so really sad. I would, I'd love to have met Brian. Never met Brian. Of course, I met uh, Mike Love and Bruce Johnson, but I never met uh, Brian. But uh, yeah, Brian never came back completely. You know, Mike was pretty far out there for a while, but Mike came back. And, you know, actually, Mike did a lot of good to keep the Beach Boys together. And uh, when it wasn't too easy, he had Dennis freaking out and, you know, not getting along during shows and stuff like that. So Mike had his work cut out for him. Dennis is the one that fell off the boat. Brian's still alive. Dennis fell off the Dennis fell off the boat looking for his ex-wife's. Uh, jewelry and stuff that had been thrown over a year but a year before or something like that but dennis is the one that fell off the boat not brian i do know my beach boys pretty well did you ever see the uh the madeline brown interview pedro about JFK on YouTube. I think it was, I don't know if, it, if, if, if Alex Jones 
uh, promoted that or what, whatever. But the lady's name, her name's Madeline Brown, and she talks about this uh, party that they had at Clint Murkerson Mer Mer Sr.'s house in Dallas. And um, Nixon was supposed to go there or something, and, and they were talking about how they were going to murder JFK. And the woman seems so believable, but she's not. I mean, she's a liar. She said that JFK, I mean, keep losing my uh my wi-fi but um she seems so believable but the bottom line is she's a liar i mean i think she mixes in a little truth with her lies but man she's a really good liar and you and you just you see it here the first time you think oh man th this lady knows everything she's saying but when you dig into it it was all bs first of all clint Murkison wasn't even living at dallas at the time he had already moved out to a ranch in east texas where he was originally from It was Karen Allen Black. Where do you get that from? Where do you get that from, Suffer? Karen Allen Black. Karen Allen's not black. No, Caroline Allen's not black. I don't know what you saw. Yeah, that, that's true. But, um, of course, Brian, uh, Brian still gets money uh, from from the current beach boys. And so does, um, uh, Carl's family trust. And it's all and Al Jardine still has a cut. Um, I know how all that basically works, but yeah, that, you know, Brian couldn't really tour anymore anyway, unfortunately. Yes. Brian's the only Wilson left. Dennis was also in a movie with James Taylor and Warren Oates. I didn't know that in two lane blacktop, the woman actress, and Tulane Blacktop was Art. Uh, you mean Garfunkel's? Art Garfunkel's girlfriend. Hoover was in town. Why would the head of the FBI fly out to Dallas the morning the JFK came in? Yeah, it's a it's a BS story. Pet Sounds, one of the greatest albums ever. Don also said bullet. Yes, he did. He just said bullet, which makes you think of the uh, the movie bullet. Maybe as in Steve McQueen's. Yeah, Steve McQueen's bullet. It was based on Dave Toski. Did Don ever talk to Toski? Um, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. I need to go, go back around to that or anything with, uh, with Cheney and Toski. All things aside with Mike, he had a fantastic melodies and brought the fun of spirit of the Beach Boys with the reflection of Brian's melancholy side. He did. I mean, Mike brought a lot to it. And Mike was not the genius of Brian. Uh, nobody ever said he was, but Mike brought a lot to the table. He kept the Beach Boys together when they, for many years, uh, further than they should have ever gone. They needed a leader. They had a leader in Mike, and they desperately needed one. But... Um, you know, I don't think anyone ever claimed that Mike was at the level of Brian. There's no way. I mean, Brian is a true musical genius, and he's not at that level. But, of course, Mike didn't do himself any favors at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame <laughs> with that speech. Uh, you know, and listening to Mike, he, he wrote everything from the Star Spangled Banner to, <laughs> to, every, <laughs> to all the Beatles hits. Rumor is that two of the stars of that movie raped Bird. She later committed suicide after Art Garfunkel broke up with her. I, I didn't know that. So you guys know a lot. This is the worst trip you've ever been on. Your people in Dallas told you that Nixon was in town, was, as was Hoover. They both flew out the same morning. JFK flew in. Uh, man, I wish I could remember the name of this guy, Pedro, that was, was on the radio. It was on Michael Berry show here in Houston. He was a lawyer in Houston and not a well-known guy at all, but he knew the JFK deal better than anybody. And he said they're originally going to uh, assassinate JFK in Houston. And uh, something happened that shifted where they couldn't do it in Houston. So uh, uh, killing him in Dealey Plaza was a backup. 
And I mean, this, it just made so much sense of why this guy spoke about the whole thing. And I just wish I could remember who he was and if he's still alive. Not Warren Oates. James Taylor starred with Dennis. Okay. James, it was James Taylor. Yeah, James Taylor. The flashlight taped to Zodiac's barrel does not jive. Those old pencil flashlights did not produce much light. Certainly not enough to have blinded Majot. Yeah, well, um, I don't think Mike could remember if the gun had the flashlight on it, but he just said it was a flashlight that, that he had. But, you know, always going back to Majot and uh, Blue Rock Springs Park. So the car comes, you know, the car comes behind them, car leaves, comes back. And it's behind, pretty much lined up right behind uh, Darlene's car. And the killer gets out of the driver's side and he walks over to Mike's side and starts shooting. If if Darlene was the target or people want to say that was, uh, what's his face? Um, God, I'm sorry, drawing blank. But uh, the, the, the ex-husband, uh, why is he going to walk over to Majo's side of the car? I always wondered why he did that. I mean, there's... I don't think there was it was any kind of a shielding from or whatever. I and mean, there's nobody at Blue Rock Springs Park at that hour. Why does he walk over to Majo's side and start shooting? I mean, of course, he he kills them both. I mean, it kills Darlene. Of course, Mike survives, but shoots them both. Uh, but why does he go over to Mike's side? I just I always thought that was odd. No, he was a little dude, but he was a creep. I would not. Remember the Geraldo interview with Manson? Did <laughs> it get any weirder than that? Or like uh, Geraldo's acting all tough, like he's going to get into it with him. Toski, never a tough guy. I love In My Room. That's a great song. That's probably my favorite Beach Boys song, too. Never heard of him, Pedro. Yeah, I think I remember that. The dentist moved out of the house. Yeah, I'm do very dubious of anything that Majot said. He seemed to be far gone in the interview. Yeah, he's real. Mike's really far gone. And I think he was far gone by the time that George Bauer showed him a lineup. And of course, he famously picks Arthur Lee Allen out of the lineup. Uh, and I know people it used to be out there that did, you know, a group of people didn't like it when I said that I think Bauer was kind of leading him. Uh, maybe he wasn't, but uh, I know Falk tried to indicate that. Man, if Manson was a little dude. I don't know if he was 4'11, but he was a little dude. In order of meeting people, Zodiac, Jack the Ripper, Richard Ramirez. I mean, Jack Ruby, Cooper and Ridgeway. You mean D.B. Cooper, Ted Braden, D.B. Cooper, Ted Braden, Ted Braden, D.B. Cooper, same person. I don't know. Bill, if you're watching, if you heard, if you have that one, um, 1977, love you. I got, I got, I don't, I don't think so. But I'm going to check it out. You put zero stock in Slower's identification of the voice 45 years later. Oh, yeah, I don't put anything in it. I mean, over the phone. And just come on. I mean, I know. I mean, I understand that they, um, yeah, that's all you got. And you're going to try it. You know, there's that famous picture of uh, Brian Hartnell, in, you know, listening to the, um, I guess, the voice of the caller to the Dunbar show. They were, they were, they were all, Three in a, like a little sound booth or something. It was Slover, uh, Dave Slate, and Brian Hartnell because they're the only three people we know heard Zodiac's voice. Uh, listening to the the uh, the caller to the Jim Dunbar show, which of course turned out not to be Zodiac, and even Zodiac later in the three forty uh, cleared that up and said no, he was not the guy. But it was already determined it was a mental patient. But uh, there, you you can't put much into that over the phone especially with the, the, the technology from the late sixties. Yeah, I would definitely, I would hide anything from, from Manson. Parker ranch the comet that took, Oh, it took the heaven's gate cultist away. Yeah. That was crazy. Hey, Mark. 
Now, Mark, I know you've seen the documentary. You are not going to miss anything, Yuba County 5, if I know you. As Hannibal Lecter said, not anymore. <laughs> well, we know the uh, Beatles had uh, Elter Skelter. Tom got to Tom got slower to ID Geig's voice. Yes, um, after taking uh, uh, Nancy Slover on the Zodiac Party Bus tour of San Francisco and got her liquored up. <laughs> That's him, Tom. I'm sure it was him. It sounds just like the man I heard on the phone. Goodbye. I'm not as good as Ned at that, though. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Nancy was willing to give up all the goods. I definitely want to check that out. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up, but I hope everybody has a good week. Be careful not to look directly at the eclipse. If anybody gets any good pictures, you know where to send them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he'll threaten to sue me. <laughs> I'm worried. Uh, nobody except Ted Braden has the skills or guts to pull it off. That's true. You know, and apparently Braden didn't win his round on the uh, – brain trust of the db cooper mystery group on facebook he lost to a new suspect and they, uh, the, who has jfk connections named uh lauren hall aka skip hall but uh it was Braden. sorry i'm gonna go with billy wall special forces and uh prime witness in the db cooper case who was highly intrigued by ted Braden. what a shock uh the key witness in the db cooper crime uh let's do a three-hour podcast about Ted Braden. uh i'm gonna go with ted Braden. At this point, uh, for DB Cooper, and uh, that ain't changing. And I'll, I'll never be suspect number two. Uh, that was Braden on that plane. I, I don't. I don't care what anybody says. That was Braden. There's just no doubt. Uh, Braden got away with it. Uh, we we think we're putting together how he did it. Parked his 18 wheeler rig and uh, took a took a one way ticket from Portland to Seattle. Came back to Portland. Uh, went back to the truck stop, topping that rig, and he was good to go. But I think they figured it out pretty soon after that it was Braden that did it and uh, said, Ted, uh, we know you did it. We can't take you to jail because you got too many friends in high places, like in the State Department, like Carol K. Johnson and John Singlov, the co-founder of the CIA. Um, Ted knows a little too much, so we can't arrest him for that little crime that happened over there in 1971. So we're going to have to let you go with another slap on the wrist. Thanks, Pedro. I'll be back next week with more. Hopefully have more on the uh, that new uh, Arthur Leon theory and look out for a new show with me and Tony on Yuba County 5. And again, the show's called, um, shoot, what's it called? Files of the Unexplained, episode three on Netflix. Have a good week.